Happy Tuesday. Tuesday. How's everybody doing? Welcome back to the Makers Gonna Learn YouTube channel. Um, we're so excited to be here. I hope you guys are ready for today's craft because y'all, this one is so cute. It's very cute. So fun. And yeah. It's a lot easier than it looks. I'll yes. tell you that right now. It looks very high end. This is one that I, well, we're using my pictures, so I love it so much. <laughs> but this is like one of our, one of my favorite ornament tutorials that we're going to be doing this season. Yes. Um, it's very cute. It's like a photo strip. Super easy. If you've got an inkjet printer um, and you can have a deep cut blade, then you can make this project. Absolutely. So, and I'll, I'm going to teach you guys a couple different ways to make it with just cardstock. That way, if you don't have a deep cut blade, um, you can kind of whip this together. So yes. it's going to be very fun. I hope everybody's having a good day. It is a, a gorgeous rainy day here in a East gorgeous, Tennessee. Rainy days are your favorite though. Well, so they used to be until I started going to therapy. Did I tell you about this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but I do, I do love a good, especially in the fall, like a rainy fall day. Mm, it's yummy. It's yummy if you're off work and can snuggle under if a blanket on the couch. Yeah, and watch a movie or something. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. It's not as fun if you have to go to work, but if you like a rainy day, leave a comment. <laughs> That's right. So, I don't know if you guys have seen, like, on our social media, um, but we have something huge. Ooh. Like, I'm talking majorly huge. Mm -hmm. Coming up here in a couple days, as you guys know, we have our Black Friday event happening um, this coming Friday. Sorry, yes. I had to take my phone out of my pocket. And we have some really, really big news. Yes. Actually, it's going to be released midnight Thursday night. So I feel like a lot of people have been doing like black friday for the last couple weeks right yes. like do you feel that way too i mean it we, started last week for sure yeah and i mean we did black friday early too right a little bit but we just felt like we wanted to take it back to like old school black friday yeah we're we miss old school black friday when things got released like we were standing in line at stores at midnight waiting, waiting for the doors to open absolutely mm -hmm. so we wanted to take it back to old school black friday where it's going to be this big thing is going to be released midnight thursday night you all are going to have an opportunity to see it know mm -hmm. about it then and then come are we starting at 10 or 11 on? 11. So then at 11 on Friday, mm -hmm. when we do go live, we can, we get to sit and talk about it the whole time instead of just announcing it to you like you all already have, like, know about it. Yes. So if you are curious, make sure you stick around. Come be with us on Black Friday as well. Obviously, come be with us on Black Friday. Right. Anyways, because um, it's going to be fun. We're going to be crafting. 100%. Yeah. Yes. So... Just know we have some extremely big news mm. happening on Friday yes. that I'm super excited about. I know we always have these like crazy announcements, but I feel like they're always like worth the hype. They are. They are. And fr like we wouldn't do you all dirty like that on Black Friday. Like, you know, we bring it Black Friday. We're doing giveaways. We're making huge announcements. The crafts are on another level. Uh -huh. So make sure that you all are there on Black Friday. We'll just be live on the YouTube channel. So you don't need to do anything other than turn your, turn your notifications on that way you don't forget yeah you know it gets crazy right it's starting to uh -huh. get crazy we're in the holiday season um but we'll be going live at 11 until 4 you guys okay 11 to 4 so we're gonna be we're doing two different crafts with you all we've got a surprise right in the middle uh -huh. um it's gonna be really fun really epic we're doing a craft off me and Courtney are doing a craft off Lauren's in charge of the competition and idea oh I'm so excited <laughs> I'm gonna throw I'm some nervous. wrenches in their competition that's for sure I feel like you were made to make the competitions mm -hmm. like I feel like you've got you're like I know how to make this hard on them yeah yeah <laughs> I'm definitely I think I'm gonna be better at that than I, I than mean competing than competing because like I get I, I know that I shouldn't be as competitive as I am but I can't help it I'm well, so and you're a perfectionist so you want it to be like really really good yeah which is good that's good but when you got an hour it's really stressful yes but anyway so make sure y'all are there for that and if you have missed the lives recently um we were running the special on the 75 off of our yearly membership uh -huh. y'all 
we are still running that sale. We're still running it. So if you, I mean, this is the time, if you are wanting to become a Makers Gonna Learn member and you have been in the comments creeping around, but you haven't ever joined our membership, Christmas season is where it's at, mainly because we're gonna be giving you guys so much content in December, so many things to make using all of our files, all of our fonts, and you all will not have access to that unless you're a member. And right now, $75 off of our uh -huh. yearly membership is the best deal that we run ever. Yes. So make sure if you've been on the fence, the time is now. Right now. Yeah. So, Absolutely. Very exciting stuff. So I think we've covered everything. I don't yeah. wanna like I don't wanna like keep talking about the announcement that we have because I know you all are, are super excited. Yeah, and everybody's going to be there on Friday. Everybody's going to be, be there. there. <laughs> you, you all know. Yes. So, yeah, I think we're ready to start crafting. Okay, let's do it. So, we are working with special materials today. When I say special materials, I usually mean like not vinyl. So, we're working with wood veneer. We're working with um, craft board. If you've never worked with that, it's like a really thick cardstock base. Well, I don't even, it's like a yeah, really thick cardstock. Uh, but let me show you guys close up what we're making. If we can go overhead, I'm going to show you all how singing cute this is. Now, Courtney made this originally, and I was on maternity leave, and she sent me a picture, and I was like, oh my gosh, like that is the cutest thing I've ever seen. So these were just our newborn pictures that we had made for my baby. This will be her first Christmas. And I just love this. This is a good giftable ornament. And this oh, is yes. like, this, this would be something I would bring um, for like a first Christmas in the new home or if someone just had a baby, even got married. Like if yeah. they just got married, you could put wedding pictures in here. That would be like, the, um, do like their last names, first Christmas. Yes. First Christmas in a new home. Really and truly, you could, th this could be really uh, fun with just family photos in it too and not necessarily for a first Christmas. Yeah, yeah. Just give it to them as it is with their last name on it or something like that. So you're not going to need a whole lot of supplies, but there are very specific supplies you're going to need. So like I was saying, it's made out of wood veneer and the backing is made out of craft board. So this is our wood veneer. You all can see how thin this is. It's like a thin sheet of wood, basically. Um, this is the Cricut brand wood veneer. It comes in different colors. I personally love this like natural finish. Uh -huh. um, I just think it's so pretty um, and it kind of matches the vibe of my Christmas tree anyways. Um, and then I've just got this piece of craft board. This is also Cricut brand and everything I'm talking about is linked in the description below for you guys. If you ever watch a video and you're like, where'd they get that? Check the description. We always link all of our materials. Uh -huh. And then I've got just a piece of scrap white HTV. Um, I've got a brayer. I like to use a brayer instead of a squeegee a lot of times, especially with the wood veneer, because I can just like make sure it's on there really good. And with print and cut. And with print. I just love a brayer. Yeah. I mean, let's be honest. Um, I've got a pen pen tool because we're going to be weeding that HTV and it's going to be teeny, teeny tiny. So the pen pen tool has just got a little needle on the top of it right here. So it's a little bit more dainty than a weeding tool. Um, and it's called a pin pin tool. These are amazing. They sell them on 143 vinyl if you're ever looking for one. I've got some dap glue. This is just a quick drying super glue. It's all purpose. It works really good with the materials we're using today. Um, I've got some tape because I'm using a standard grip mat and normally I would use a strong grip mat. We ordered some new strong grip mats and they were for the silhouette on accident. Mm -hmm. um, so you can use a standard grip mat or like a, new, like a new standard grip mat works really well for stuff like this. But I like to stick tape all the way around the perimeter. That way our wood veneer is not going to be moving because we don't want to mess our cut up. So just got masking tape. You can use painter's tape, whatever you've got on hand. Washi tape works good. Um, and then I've got some ribbon. You can use whatever ribbon you've got on hand and then scissors. You're just going to want like a thin ribbon. You don't want to do anything really thick, just something like this. Even like jute twine would be really cute. Something along those lines. So that's all you need in terms of materials. Now let's go into the share screen. So I've got everything laid out here. Now, the beauty of being a member is that we already have this ornament file ready for you guys to get. So what that means for you is that you don't have to build this file. It's already been built for you, which is amazing. Um, but this is all of the elements that we're going to end up coming up with. So you can see here, it kind of breaks apart into multiple different layers. So we're going to be creating 
all four of these layers to build our ornament. So what we're gonna need to do is go and get everything that we need off of the Maker's Gonna Learn website. So let's pop over here and I've already got the font pulled up. This is the font we're using today. It's called Angelina. She's cute, she's gorgeous. And if you're not sure what font you wanna use, um, you can always test out like what you want it to say. Like if I wanted to see what Georgia would look like in this font, which is my baby's name, I can kind of test it out. That's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. I love it. Yes. So what you need to do, select the download button. If I go too fast through this and you've just become a member, you can learn how to do downloading fonts and things like that on our 30 Days to Master Your Cricut. And we walk you slowly, step by step, how to do this. So it pops into my downloads. I'm gonna double click that zip folder and then I'm gonna double click right here and hit install font. And that is gonna put it onto our computer. Now I need to go back to design space, save whatever I've been working on, make sure you save it. And then we're gonna refresh design space or reload it. So go to view, reload, and then our font should be installed on our computer. Pretty easy, right? I remember when I first started downloading fonts into Design Space and I was like, how do I do it? Like I had to do it a bunch before I finally figured mm -hmm. out like, okay, once you do it like 50 times, you're like, okay, I got it. So our font is on here. I'm gonna show you guys where to find it. So let's just type out what we want on our ornament. Let's do Georgia's first Christmas. I'm gonna pull this down below and then go to your fonts. Now you're gonna find your downloaded fonts in the system fonts right here. And I'm just gonna type in Angelina, hit search and there she is. Look how cute. Now, even if I shrink this down right here, you can see there's a little bit of a gap in between the text. If you want your lines of text to be a little bit closer, go to advanced up here in the top middle and we're gonna ungroup to lines. And then I'm gonna click this bottom row and just bump it up a little bit. I like them to kind of hug each other. I love when like the G in this, this lowercase G hot kind of crosses yes. over. That really makes things look a little bit higher quality in my opinion. Um, I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know what the reasoning is, but it just does. It looks better. And then you can actually just group those back together. I'm actually going to, let's combine and unite them. They're gonna stay exactly where they are this way. Yep. So if I grouped them, they would still be able to float around and I don't want them to float whenever we go to make it. So I'm gonna sit that to the side for now. And then the next thing we're gonna need is the base for the ornament. So I've already got this pulled up. If you go to the description and click on the photo strip ornament link, it's gonna pop right up into your browser. This is what it looks like. And what I'm gonna need to do is hit download. It's gonna pop up into a zip folder, same way the font did. And we are gonna just leave this open. So it's gonna pop open in the downloads area of your computer. If for some reason you can't find it, go to your search bar, go to your finder, and type in the name of the file. So it's photo-strip-ornament, and it's an SVG. And then we're gonna open up Design Space. So we're leaving that open behind Design Space. I'm gonna go Upload, and then we're gonna go Upload Image. And then down here, I'm just gonna select my finder which is this right here. And let me minimize our browser screen because that's kind of in the way for us. Open design space. Where it's full screen, it's giving me a hard time. So I'm gonna make it not full screen. Pull up this finder folder right here and you can just click and drag. Now you could just browse and find the image wherever it is in the folder, but I like to click and drag personally. So and we're gonna upload that. I'm gonna go back full screen so we can see what the heck I'm doing. And then I'll select the ornament, add it to canvas, and here we go. Now let's see if it's the same size, because I feel like it's bigger. Oh yeah, it is bigger. Now you can do it that size. This is a, this is a 6.8 in height, or you could just do like a six inch one. I wouldn't make it huge. No. Mainly, I mean, I don't know. I just wouldn't go too, too big. I feel like between seven, six and seven inches is probably a good um, height for us. Yes. So what I'm gonna do next, I'm just gonna move all this stuff to the side so you all aren't paying attention to it. So you know we've got just these elements right here. 
Okay, these are all of our elements so far. Now, you can see over here in the layers panel, there's two layers to this image. Right now, they're grouped together. So what you're gonna need to do is ungroup them. So you can see when I hover over this little button in the layers key, it says ungroup. I'm just gonna select that. And then you can see here, this is gonna be our craft board layer. And this is gonna be our wood veneer layer. Does anybody have questions yet? I don't see any comments coming No in. comments, no questions. It makes me wonder are people like, are but we have about 190 people here. Oh good, okay. Yeah. So you guys are just watching then. Good, that's great. So. What I'm gonna do next is get all of oh, my pictures. Oh, we did just have a question. What blade do you use for the wood veneer? Patty, I'm gonna get to that in just a second. Just okay. hang tight, okay? So um, we are gonna go ahead and upload our pictures. And I'm just gonna go to uploads. And these are already in here. Now, if you wanted to pull in images, like your own images, let me find these that Courtney pulled in for me. Um, Oh, yeah, there yeah. they are. Okay. So you can upload whatever images you want. You can email them to yourself and then save them to your computer. You can airdrop them to your computer if you've got um, a Mac. Whatever you need to do to get those on to your uploads. I'm going to go ahead and add them to my canvas and hit view. Now they come in really big. Look, there's my baby. She's gotten so big since then. Mm -hmm. This was, she was a week old. Here. yeah she was teeny weeny so and this is my little this is Ruby and my husband Trey so sweet so I'm just gonna resize all these a little bit smaller okay but really the main thing that we need to do is get them to the size of these squares so what I like to do I'm gonna zoom in here so you guys can get a really good look what I'm gonna do is take a basic shape, just a square. So you can go over here, select square. And what I'm gonna do, I don't want it to be exactly the size of the squares in this photo um, strip. I want it to be a little bit bigger. So it kind of hides behind the border, if that makes sense. Because mm -hmm. you can see, like right now I've got this selected. Say the image was this big. Let me change the color. Say the, Im uh, say the image was this big. When I send it to the back, you can see the edges of that image are kind of tucked behind yes. the frame. So you don't want to make it exact because it's going to be hard to line that up. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We don't want to make it difficult. So that's a good size. And then we're going to need three of those because we have three slots and they're all the same size. Okay. But then what you're going to want to do, and I'm just going to change this to a guide function. This is going to allow these squares to just be an outline. And that way I can see what I'm hovering over whenever we actually go to cut out our pictures. So change in the guide. Let me bring that one back to the front. And then what you're gonna do is take your square and put it over your image. Now you can see right now, just Trey and Ruby's face is in here. I want the whole family. So I'm gonna need to resize this image so that it fits inside of here, okay? And I don't wanna cover up Georgia's head and I also let me zoom in even more you also want to make sure that you're not accidentally making it too small where part of it's cut off you want to make sure everybody fits in here really good I feel like that's pretty good I want to make it bigger just make sure everything's within that box and then you're going to select it we're going to select the square and the picture go to combine I'm sorry go to slice and then it's going to cut it. I don't think you can use the combine um, exclude function with the guide. Does that make sense? Yeah, you can't. Um, but if you wanted to use the exclude function, you can always, so we're gonna hover our square over. I'll show you guys what you could do. I'm gonna hover this over. Let's zoom in and make sure everything's fitting where we want it. Okay. Oh. And then I'm going to change this square. I've got it where I want it, right? I'm going to change the operation to basic. Then you can select the square in the picture. Go to, oh, the reason you can't do exclude is because we're using a, an image, like a photo, because it's like, it's a PNG. 
and you cannot exclude with an SBT and a PNG. They're like not compatible, okay? So we're still gonna need to slice, so ignore me changing this to a basic cut. I was just, I couldn't remember why it was gonna let me. But now we're gonna slice it out. You can delete all of these layers and see we've got our second image. And then we'll do the one of little George's face. Let's go get our guide. And I'm just gonna shrink this down a little bit. Y'all, this is just so cute. I just can't, I can't deal. And then we're gonna select both, hit slice, and delete all of the layers that we don't need. Okay, that was a lot. Does anybody have questions so far? Anybody, anybody? Not so far. The questions that people have been asking have just been like simple questions that we've answered in the comments. Okay. Um, I, know, I see a lot of people talking about the veneer. We'll go more into depth here in just a second when we start cutting the veneer. I'm going to give you guys all the tips, all the things that we do around here when we're working with veneer. Um, but let's get the design space portion because I don't want to get you guys confused. Yes. So now what I like to do, I'm going to line these up in here. Okay. Line these up just like that. Now, I would like for them to print out exactly where they are. I want to print them and cut them as one image. Right now, they're three separate images. So this is what I like to do. I'm gonna grab a square and we're gonna unlock it, okay? This is gonna allow us to kind of warp it however we need to. And what I'm gonna do, I need it to be smaller than the wood piece, but I need it to cover the photos, okay? I'm gonna change it to white. And I'm gonna send this all the way back. Send it all the way to the back, okay? Click off of it. Now we're gonna move our brown piece, okay? So this looks like a real photo strip right here. Uh huh. But the photos are still free floating. So like, if I click it, it's still an individual image. What I wanna do is flatten all these so they're on one layer. So right now we've technically got four layers because we have the three pictures and the rectangle. I want it to be on one layer so it cuts out all together whenever we do our print and cut. So what you need to do is select all of it, okay, select all the pictures as well as the rectangle and we're going to flatten. This allows us to create one image, okay? That's so much easier than having to individually place each picture where you want it. Why did it let me click that? picture of Georgia just then. Did you see that? I did see that, but I don't know why. Because over here, everything's on one layer. That must have just been a glitch on Design Space. But Had over here, been. yeah, because that was weird. It that never was does very that. weird. Um, but you can see over here, it's it's all one image. So it's all, it's only going to cut around that big square. Okay. Now, if you really, really wanted to get, oh, I'm going to bring this to the front. If you really, really wanted to get picky about where things go, I don't know if I should show them the score line hack. Do you think we should try that? Let me show you guys. I'm going to show you guys like a little hack that okay. you can do. I have not done this on craft board before, but I think that it'll work. So if you guys ever do like paper crafts or anything like that, a lot of times it's hard to line up the things that go on the paper craft and like it's permanent once you put it on there if you're gluing it or sticking it like you don't want to peel stuff back off mm -hmm. so what i like to do i'm going to duplicate this mm. change it just change it to a score line, score line should be able to it won't that's on it's not letting me okay what i'll do is make a rectangle this exact size so we need to, a 1.881 by 5.572 it's very specific so 1.881, we're gonna make a rectangle that's the exact size. 881 by 5 point what? I don't know. <laughs> I'll go back, 5.332. 332, okay. I think. Let's double check. 5.572. 572. That was better, better than I would have remembered. I can't remember numbers. Hold on, people. So we're creating a rectangle right here, the same size as this one, okay? Now what you're gonna wanna do is we're just gonna move our little pictures over here. I'm gonna pop this right where our pictures would go, okay? Let's double check that everything's aligned to bring it to the front. And you can even select this all center uh, vertically, okay? Move this. I'm going to select this square 
and change it to a score function. Y'all with me? Okay. Now I need to select the score line as well as that backer and attach it. So now I have a score, I have a scoring stylus in my um, Cricut. It's gonna make a line around there and that way this little sticker right here that we're gonna print on printable vinyl can go exactly where it needs to go. Does that and make sense? Yes. That will show you exactly mm -hmm. where to place it so that you're not placing it too far down or too far to one side right. and your white's not showing through. Yes. And this score line is like a hair to the left and it's bothering me. So I'm just selecting it over here in the layers panel and I bumped it one time. That's perfect. Beautiful. Okay. Does everybody, yes, uh, Kelly said it's a little off. I fixed it. I fixed it. Is everybody with me? That yes. was kind of like, that was a hack and totally not necessary, but it's going to help you whenever you go to line up your picture. And I'll show you guys how helpful it is whenever we get there. Um, but that is... Pretty much everything we need, we do need to resize our text. So this is gonna be printed or cut in HTV. I'm gonna change it to white and we're gonna shrink this down. Now this font is very like choppy. Um, so let me just see here really quick. Do you guys see how choppy this font is? Mm -hmm. Sometimes I like to add an offset I'm going to show you guys what I do. It may design spaces be in like a real pain today. Let's see here. Okay. I made a 0 0.01 offset here. So I selected the text, go to offset, hit 0 0.01, and we're going to hit apply. Now you're probably like, well, that didn't do anything. It still looks like crap. It's still very like distressed looking, but look. No, it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> And so I love this hack for distressed fonts because this Angelina font is beautiful, but like whenever you go to cut these little distress markings, especially with something that's super dainty, yes. it does not, it's a hot mess express, especially with adhesive vinyl. HGV is not as bad, but like you guys don't want to have to deal with that. So we're just going to work with this offset. Okay. I'm going to change it to white so we can see it better and let's bring it to the front and just resize it so that it fits there. Okay, y'all with me? I that's think it. so, everybody's with you. Okay, that's, I mean, that's all of the design space portion. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm just going to group this all together and then hide it. That's my little hack for hiding everything before I cut. So we've got all of the things we need. We've got our backer, this is our chipboard. This light brown is our chipboard. The dark brown is our wood veneer. We've got our HTV words right here, and this is our printable vinyl. So we're working with four different materials, you guys. This is crazy. And then what you're gonna do is go to make, okay? Um, right now, it's pulling in an 11 by 17 sheet of paper for our printable vinyl. No, thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> we just need eight and a half by 11. Now, if you're making these as gifts, obviously you can do multiple and go ahead and print your pictures all together so you're not wasting a whole sheet of printable vinyl for one photo. Um, but just for the sake of the, the video, we don't have, we're just gonna do one picture. Yeah. So I'm gonna select continue, send to printer. We are using the Canon TS 8100 Series 2. Um, I don't need a bleed here because we have a white offset border around it. I am always going to use system dialog when I print. If you are a Maker School Learn member, you better also be doing this. Okay. Uh, amen. Hashtag retweet. Hashtag retweet. We're going to print it. The reason we use the dialog box is because this gives us our highest quality print. Y'all, it popped up in front. <laughs> it's a Christmas miracle. I think because it's full screen. Even better. So if you hit print from dialog box and you don't see it, check behind design space. Sometimes it pops up back there. Um, we're going to be in the media and quality on this drop down menu. And we're going to feed this from the rear tray. And I'm going to hit best quality. And then we're going to print that. And Lauren's fetching it for me right now. Um, and that's it. Let me go ahead and select our Cricut. We're using an Explore 3 today. Holy moly, I forgot to change it on the canvas. Oh, no. I think it'll be fine for our print and the cut. Okay. Because I didn't move it. Okay. We're going to try it. Keep our fingers crossed. Yeah, keep our fingers crossed. Okay. Here we go. Did it print? It's in the process. It is. Okay. 
We'll test it out and see if that works. Um, we're gonna use printable sticker paper in white with the green liner printing. I'll be honest with you guys, the difference, there's not really a lot of difference. There's one that has like a gray liner printing. There's not a big difference. Yeah, there is quite a bit of difference. What's the difference? It cuts through. It cuts completely through the backer. And the gray done. one cuts all the way through? Yes. Uh-huh. I guess I always use the green one. Yeah, the gray one cuts all the way through. So the green one is going to give you a kiss cut, which means it doesn't cut all the way through. The gray one's going to cut all the way through. It's going to give you like a sticker, like an individualized uh -huh. sticker. Yep. So we do want to use the green one for this purpose. Um, and then I'm just going to bray it down. Those are new. Those printable sticker paper It's settings. because Cricut came out with their not new. I mean, they used to have back in the day, like they had They're sticker old. paper, but they have now re-released a sticker paper. So that's why they changed all their settings in Design Space as well. They relaunched it better, I think. I think it was like not good before. No, okay. it was great before. Then why did they stop selling it? I don't know. Oh. It was Tanner's favorite before. I thought, I heard yeah. that it was not good and they stopped selling it. No, he, I didn't use it. I'll be real honest. I did not use it because I wasn't working here. I didn't. I had never used it either. I didn't even know they had it. I thought when they released it, it was new. So that was news to me. I'm putting my hair up in a pony because like, I don't know why I wear a sweatshirt. And I can put it in a bun. I can put it in a bun. Okay. Thank you, Zakia. I'm trying to find clothes that fit after having a baby, so <laughs> it's got to be stretchy. <laughs> so right now the Cricut is scanning the um, scanning the box, and then it's going to cut out our pictures. So you can see like the little light is going off, and it's going to cut. We're using the matte printable sticker paper today. This is the Zakoto brand matte sticker paper. Beautiful. She's crispy. Okay. Go ahead and take that off. And then I'm just gonna remove this from the back. You can feel that. You can feel the cut on that one even too. Mm -hmm. Okay, so y'all can see it's cut. I'm gonna leave it on here just for a second. We're gonna cut everything else and wait till we okay. pull it off. Go ahead and take that. Okay, and so now it's wanting us to cut our HTV. So you can see up here, we've got our George's First Christmas. Now, this is HTV, so it needs to be mirrored. Don't forget, go to edit and turn your mirror on and hit done. We're gonna be using the everyday iron on cut setting that is for heat transfer vinyl at default pressure and we're using the fine point blade for this. And then overhead, you can see this is the shiny side. This is the more matte side. With normal HTV, you're gonna cut carrier sheet side down. So transfer sheet side down. HTV has a built-in transfer sheet. It's typically shiny and we're gonna put it face down, okay? So we should be looking at the less shiny side. And then we're gonna pop this in there, Cricut. Okay. And then we are going to cut it. Donna says, I added the StarCraft matte laminate to my stickers and because of the double layer, I had to use the gray backing sticker setting with no more pressure to get the kiss cut, but that worked beautifully. That's good to know, Donna. Yeah. Because we do that a lot. I'll have to remember that one. Okay, thank you guys for being so nice about my outfit. It is super cute. My best friend, she cleans my house, Michaela. Um, she was at my house this morning about to clean, and I was like, do I look fat? <laughs> I said, I have to be on camera today. <laughs> she was like, no, and Trey was like, you look good, but Trey will tell me I look good when I don't look good. Like, he's, he's just trying to be your nice. husband. I know, but I'm like, you gotta, you're the one who has to tell me I look bad. Like, I depend but on you your could, honesty. You could look like a trash panda, and he would still think you're beautiful. He does. And he says that. I'm like, but what do you think the rest of the world thinks about it? <laughs> I don't need your opinion. <laughs> I, don't need, I don't need your opinion. I need a real opinion. <laughs> I need a real opinion. <laughs> That's so funny. Holly asked, have y'all seen the lean, lean, I may be saying that wrong, lean photo printer. It looks awesome to use for pictures. Huh. I haven't heard of that before. Hmm. You'll have to show us. Kelly, I always cover my print and cut with the matte cover, then bray it. Normally, I, the ink oh. dries pretty fast. Yeah, on this matte paper, it's like... It's like instant. Yeah, now glossy is another story. Yeah, but I still feel like I've not had any issues with it being like... It's not awful, but no. sometimes if you do it like right when it comes out, it can be a little sketchy. 
but normally I, we use the matte so much. The matte's my favorite, and I just think it's so pretty. And I mean, look at the quality. We can go overhead. Look how look at the quality of this print. I feel it's like a very it, good quality. It is. It's a very good. I think it looks so cute. Okay, it's cutting out these teeny tiny letters. I don't know. And after this, are you gonna cut the wood veneer or the craft board next? Um, the wood veneer is next. Beautiful. I know y'all are getting antsy. Okay, and then I'm just going to peel this off now. Don't come for me. Everybody weeds on the mat. I know, I know, I know. Weed on the mat, that's the thing around here. But this is so tiny. Is my head covering? Okay. This is why, no, I guess we can sort of weed on the mat. This is why this pen pen tool is so handy because y'all, this is tiny. And I can get in the middle of those letters and cut. Or in weed. I don't know why I said cut. Oh, lordy day. This is a little bit strenuous. But this would be a thousand times harder with adhesive vinyl. Oh, for sure. So, <laughs> 10 out of 10 recommend using HGV. Specifically, um, Caesar Easy Weed. It weeds like butter, it cuts like butter. It's just the goat, it's the one that you wanna use. And then you gotta weed out these little tiny mills of the letters. And you could totally skip the name at the bottom. Like if you didn't wanna do this little intricate design, you could totally just skip this part. But it does add a good personal touch in my opinion. Okay. My contact's trying to pop out. Oh, really? Yep. Okay, there we go. So, I think we lost the dot to the eye, but honestly, still a win in my book. Because <laughs> that we did really good. So, I'm going to set it to the side. And now, we're going to cut the wood veneer. Everyone's been asking. So, I'm going to go ahead and put this on my mat. You can see that we have used this already. I'm just going to flip it over here. And I've got my brayer. Oops, I'm trying to line this up perfectly. Okay, got my brayer. Now, remember at the beginning of the show, I was talking about using masking tape or painter's tape because this will feel like it's stuck down, but I promise y'all, which this cut isn't super crazy, so it may not move, but in order for me to feel good about cutting this on the Cricut um, on a standard grip mat, I'm taping it down because yeah. I have no trust. Zero trust. Zero trust. I'm just going to tape it on all four sides, and that way there's no risk of it wiggling around because I just can't. I don't want to have to recut it, you know? And this wood veneer, she ain't cheap. No, she's not, but I really do think, like, it is a material that is one that takes a project from, like, a level 5 to a level 10 if you I, use it. I agree. I you know what I mean? Yes. And I was going to tell you guys, I mentioned at the beginning of the show that this tape is awful. Um, I mentioned at the beginning of the show that what is happening here? <laughs> is tape it not? Is, it's like, like, you know, when you pull tape and it only comes off on a certain portion. Here we go. We got it. Um, you guys could cut this out of cardstock and do the same thing. Just FYI. Like you could cut, instead of wood veneer right now, you could pick like some pretty red cardstock or glitter cardstock would be really pretty, specifically the red Ashley Falco um, red glitter shed proof. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying. Also, I think she announced two new shed proof she glitters. She did navy and maroon. Yeah, and they're gorgeous. You need to get some of that. Okay, so all sides are taped, okay? Now, somebody asked, I think it was Patty was asking about our um, which blade. I was trying to say needle. Which blade? This is the deep point blade. So there is, like, I want to show you guys side by side. Maybe I can get this fine point blade out. Okay, look. Can y'all see the difference here? The black one is the deep point. This is the fine point. Uh huh. You can see there's an obvious difference in the blade. This one's a little bit longer. I want to say that angle is a little bit steeper on the deep cut blade 
It is. Sorry, it looks I was, a little bit so, more steep. Than so the, the other fine one. point blade is a forty-five degree angle. The mm -hmm. deep cut blade is a sixty degree angle. That's what I was thinking. I couldn't remember the, the numbers. extra fine, or if you get the um, like off-brand um, Cricut blades. Yeah, there is one that is a thirty-five degree angle. That's the blue tipped one. What do you use that for? Um, tissue paper. Oh, like delicate, very things. delicate stuff, but like you can't use tissue paper on a Cricut mat. Right. You can with a new silhouette though. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, so back in design space, let's go to browse all materials. They have a wood veneer setting, so let's just top in wood veneer. Okay, natural wood veneer. Now, I can't promise you if y'all are using non Cricut brand wood veneer that this cut setting is gonna work for you. Um, Nikita said Cricut veneer is 50% off at Michael's right now. Oh, that's good to Stock know. Stock up. Yeah, really, really, literally. Um, but I will say that the Cricut, we don't always advocate for Cricut brand materials when crafting, um, mainly because you can find better quality in a lot of the things that are not Cricut brand. Mm -hmm. But the wood veneer, the Cricut wood veneer, I always go to. Like, we don't use another brand of wood veneer. That yes. I'm aware of. I've never used don't no. another brand. Um, so uh -uh. we normally probably get ours off Amazon or just like the Cricut website if you guys are looking to get some. But they were saying that it's on sale at Michael's right now. So yes, if you need to get some, the link it's linked below. We link the wood veneer for you guys. Ooh, it's cutting and it's not moving because we taped it down. Because we're smart crafters around here. Amen. Amen. Okay, are y'all getting ready for Thanksgiving? The turkey? I've set the turkey out. We set it out on Saturday. I'm in charge of the turkey. I'm also making broccoli casserole. I'm making corn and green beans. Those are my foods. Sorry, I'm trying to take care of something for somebody. Um, I am in charge of sides tomorrow and then for all sides no not all like just some oh. sides oh okay sorry <laughs> <laughs> and then we're just all kind of doing like my family is cooking on actual thanksgiving which a family the the four of us the four of us girls well that'll be fun good times yeah okay so you can see here we're just gonna very delicately pop this out let me pull this off. Okay. It's a little snag. Sometimes I'll just kind of bend it back and forth until it pops off. All right. And then you can see we've got a little bit of tape up here. We can just kind of peel that off, pop out all of our little squares. Now, if there's a part that's really snagged, you can always grab a true control knife and it'll cut right through it. Let's see here, this one's a little bit more snagged than the other ones for whatever reason. Let me show you guys. There we go. So I'll just go along the crack here and kind of loosen it up. Just be careful not to cut into the part you wanna keep. I'm gonna go down through here and then over here. Okay. And then this should just pop out. Sometimes going on the back side helps too. Yeah. Helps a lot actually. So we did have a friend, um, Holly asked about printers. How, um, what printer should I ask for for Christmas and what would be good for thick paper? We love our Canon printer. Mm -hmm. um, the one that we used to use all the time was the Canon TS9500, which is a great printer and actually can print larger than like the eight and a half by 14. Yeah. Um, if you want one a little bit cheaper, we love the one we've been using is the T, uh, Canon TS8100 series. We love Canon printers, especially for print and cut. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Those Canon printers, I tell you, that 9500 it did us well. Yes. Other than when we tried to put tissue paper through it. Other then, than when we said it was amazing on live stream. Yeah. And then tried to use it on uh -huh. live stream and broke it during a yes. master class. Um, we also had some more questions. I don't want you all to think that I was looking over that. So um, we had a friend on here ask about 
3D cut files and I've been trying to take get that taken care of. So we're gonna be, it's supposed to, and I know this is not a 3D cut file, but to answer your question, there should have been instructions that download with all of the 3D cut files, but for some reason they're not for me right now. So we're in the process of taking care of that with our 3D cut files. Good. Answered that question. Thanks for now, letting us know. Yes. Now, um, the next couple questions that I really want to address is, Denise asked, do you have to use the deep point deep blade housing or can you change out the blades on your regular housing yes technically speaking you can use a deep point blade mm -hmm. in a fine point housing the housings are the same mm -hmm. they just keep them separate so that you know the black housing is your deep point blade your silver housing is your fine point because if you're like me i well, I tend to forget a lot of things. And mm -hmm. one of those being, I would probably put a deep point blade in my fine in point fine. housing mm -hmm. and forget to change it out after I'm done. Yep. And it's very hard to tell the difference once you've taken that cap off. It is. To be real honest. like it's Unless it's, you're holding them side by side, right. it's kind of hard to tell the right. difference. Um, I'm going to cut this on craft board setting, y'all. So th I've already put my craft board on my standard grip. So I'm going to select, it's craft with a K. Okay, craft board done. Mm -hmm. And then we are, it's telling me to load my scoring stylus. I've already got it in there. And we are gonna use the fine point blade for this. So I need to change my blade back. Okay. And then just follow up, do what Cricut tells you to do. You know what I'm saying? And then we'll go ahead and load this in. And we did have a friend ask, I currently have a Silhouette Cameo 4. Will this work on it as well? So yes, you're just going to have to, the settings that we use, you're just going to have to use different settings on your Silhouette. So you'll probably have to, the blade will be um, further down in the housing, like you would maybe have the blade setting at a five or something, and then your pressure is going to be different and your speed. You have to set all of those if you are working in Silhouette. Yes. Um, 3D cuts, those are like our 3D paper images. What yeah. does it, hold on, Cricut saying, power cycle your machine by unplugging and replugging the power cord. Why? I have never seen that. Oh. Okay. Okay, do it. Okay, do it. Okay, do it. Um, the Canon that we have uses the cartridges, but the cartridges are not super expensive or at least the ones that we purchase are not okay um we are having technical difficulties let me cancel the cut yes i want to cancel i'm gonna go all the way out and then go all the way back in make it let's go back down to our craft board and I've re, I had to unplug, unplug it and plug it back in. I Wendy don't. said she's has gotten a lot of those messages lately. Um, Amy, the wood veneer is like a thick cardstock. It's very, very thin. Okay. And then let's load this back in. It scored it already. It just didn't cut it. So I don't know. It was telling me to unplug it because it was like having a power issue. So I did. I don't know. I don't know what happened. Okay, it's gonna rescore it, but that's fine because we won't see that anyways. Okay, I did get the mini Easy Press out. I put it on the medium heat setting. Um, you don't want it too hot. HTV adheres to wood very easily. You would be surprised. Mm -hmm. So we don't need it to be too toasty. Um, but I am gonna go. Um, what in heat haul tarnation? Is it my craft board setting? It doesn't lock. Hold on. Let's try one more. Well, that one, you, the power cord. I'm gonna fully unplug it and like re-plug it. In. Okay, somewhere else. <laughs> I don't feel like that would matter. It's okay. We're gonna try it. Okay, let's turn it. I back. really hope we don't have to call member care. If you guys put it on the share screen, Sadie, so they can see it, because Donna was asking. So this is what it said before. Power cycle your machine by unplugging and replugging its power cord. If it persists, call member care. Okay, it's being a little bit persistent, if you want me to be honest with you. Let's go back, go back. Go back, go back, go back, go back to where you were. Okay, let's X. 
take that off. Let's get rid of all this. Just, I wish there was a way you could like select everything and hide it all together. So, well, earlier I selected it all, grouped it, and then hide the group. That's what I do a lot of times, but. Like if you can just hide your project. Let's try again. If this doesn't work, I'm gonna take off the score line mm -hmm. and see if that helps. I don't know why, but I feel like that might help. All right, let's see. Nikita work. said, mine has had that error and cuts out halfway through a thing that needs multiple passes. Oh, so maybe it's that's the issue. Okay, we'll see. We're gonna try it one more time. If I need to cut it on heavy cardstock, I will. Like, and let it do yep. multiple passes. Okay. So it's been scoring just fine. And then when we go to cut is when we're having an issue. She just wanted to be unplugged. She just needed to refresh, go. that's all. Okay. Um, why well, cut the picture hole for the back? We are not. No, well, I think she means this hole. Oh, because... Um, so it's like a solid piece. I think that's what she means. Do you mean this hole, like the top little dangly hole? I think that's just a, so it's solid. It looks finished. If you don't do it that way, it doesn't look as finished. I think that's what you mean, hopefully. Okay, before I pull this off, I'm going to... Okay, oh, it's definitely cut through. <laughs> I was going to make sure that it cut all the way through before we pulled it off the mat. Uh-oh, I'm stuck. And then we're just gonna go with gravity and pop this off. And you can see our score line. It's a little bit off if I'm being honest with you guys. So that I may need to just calibrate my machine, which we'll worry about later. Mm -hmm. And that tape took a little bit off of my mat of this thing, but this is the part that you're not gonna see. So it's okay. And then what we're gonna need to do is stick our photo so we're going to take our picture okay i'm just going to pull this off and we're going to pray that this lines up we are using an explore series machine today in case you were wondering it's actually an explore three mm -hmm. okay i hope i line that up look let's see here did i It's off. Five. See how off it is? Like, see how the white's on the top there? So I think my problem is the calibration. Yeah. I think that it just wasn't calibrated correctly, so it cut a little bit off. Um, so really, I could peel this off, but I feel like if I peel this off, it's gonna peel off my, yep. What I'm gonna do to troubleshoot this is just print another reprint one. yes I'm just gonna reprint it so let's go back to the share screen and we're gonna open up our image okay and I'm just gonna reprint this and I'm actually just gonna use the same thing okay you just tell me when girl change it to eight and a half by eleven we're gonna go continue send to print go ahead okay ready yep okay Remember, use your dialog box, print it from the rear tray, best quality always, and print. Okay, it's printing out, it's printing out. Washi tape would have been better with the craft board instead of um, the masking tape, if I'm being honest. Or painter's tape. Seems painter's tape is, yeah, a little bit less Did you know sticky. they make a delicate painter's tape? That's what Glenda just said. I didn't uh, know that. Yeah, me and Courtney used it this week oh. to hang pictures. Oh, mm -hmm. well, that's good to know. I didn't know they had it. Is it called that? It's purple. It's called Delicate Painter's Tape? Mm -hmm. Scotch brand. It's Delicate Painter's Tape. Heck. We did it to hang pictures because we didn't want to rip stuff off the walls just oh, in case. Oh, okay. I use frog tape. That's my favorite, but it's sticky. Oh, frog tape is great for painting. Mm -hmm. It gives you that, oh, crisp line. Yeah, the green frog tape. Yep. It's yummy. Well, um... Try print it one more time. Okay, I'm reprinting. What happened? I was trying to use the same thing and I thought it would print in like the top 
right corner, so I put it in with the what we just cut out in the bottom or top left, I put it in the bottom right, and that's where it printed was the bottom right. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's okay. I was just trying to save paper. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna recut this and just, I'm gonna, it's gonna be good actually that we still have this one on here, because I'm gonna use this as a guide and I'm gonna line it up more towards the top of this back piece, if that makes sense to y'all. So, um, but yes, you should always calibrate when you're working with wood and stuff like that. You should just calibrate before you're doing like print and cut and things of that nature, just so you don't mess your projects up and you don't have to reprint like I am having to do. Cut that off. Oh my. I'll, I'll cut, cut it, it off. Oh, okay. Either way. While you get that ready. You need to cut it. See, that's what I did. <laughs> It printed right where it was. Don't get it on your Well, it's I'm wearing black. It'll be fine. There you go. Okay. Listen, y'all can still do print and cut with your papers janky like this. You sure would have thunk can. it. Okay. Brayer down. This is also why I like the brayer because like the squeegee, I feel like it's going to scrape my picture. It probably wouldn't, but it just makes me feel better. Okay, printable sticker paper, a green liner, printing. Let's go ahead, pop her back into the Cricut. And then while that cuts, we can iron on our little Georgia's First Christmas onto the front of our wood. So I'm just gonna line this up here, okay? My heat is ready. We've got our heat press on a medium setting. There you go. And you wanna kinda of hold that transfer sheet when you're working with wood, it tends to slide. Cause like I was saying earlier, HTV adheres to wood really well as long as you get the proper amount of heat on there. But that trans this little transfer sheet will slip and slide around. But look how easy that was. And it's a warm peel. So you just pull it off right after you iron it. Cute, right? Yeah, lovely. Um, we don't have the delicate surface painters tape linked, but if you just Google Scotch delicate surface painters tape, you will find it. And it's purple, right? Light purple, yes. Light purple. Okay. Did it cut it? Oh yeah. Okay. Um. Do we have the printer linked? It, yeah, inkjet printer. It's linked. Mm -hmm. I've seen it. Yep. Okay, let's try again. We have the TS9500 linked, and it is actually on a Black Friday deal. It says it's uh, $200. Is that what it normally is? Have you, do you remember? Mm -hmm. That's what it normally is? So it's not on a Black Friday deal. They it's lie. normally like $199. That's what they have it right now listed. It's always at. that, guys. They have, it, they have the big red thing that says a Black Friday deal, 34% off. They lie and they They're dying. doing you dirty. So I'm just But gonna, as, honestly, but that's not a bad price for that that good of a printer, in my opinion. No, I agree. I think it's a great, I think it's worth $200 every day of the week. I agree. Okay. So, we fixed it. I just lined it all the way up to the top there. It's a smidge crooked, but you know what? It's going to look good. When we put this on, it's going to finish it. So, I'm just going to take this uh, Rapid Fuse DAP glue. It's like, kind of like super glue. It's an all-purpose. Very strong. It sets in 30 seconds. So, we're going to put it on and put it and then attach it quickly. Mm -hmm. Make sure you get some glue on these in-between pieces and up here on the top so everything feels very finished. Come on out, Leroy. Now, um, we did have a couple people, let's see, um, hold on just a second. Could you use a pen to write on the wood? Um, you could if you wanted to, but if you also, I mean, if you have beautiful handwriting, by yeah. all means. Absolutely. I mean, you might could let the cricket do it. Yeah. I don't know that I don't, it I've never lead. tried to write on that wood veneer with a pen or anything. Yeah, and it might bleed into the wood grain. You have to be real careful about what kind oh, of tools you use. Someone asked, how do we get the Cricut to cut the sticker in one piece? So what you do is you line up your 
photos, and we did this earlier, so after this live is over, you or now if you wanted to, you can go back and rewatch that part, but just to give you a little bit of a refresher, we lined the pictures up the way that we wanted them and then added a rec white rectangle behind it and flattened them all together. Yes. Okay, there's glue coming out of the sides. A little bit at the pictures, what would have been good of me to do, and I knew, I knew I should have done it. After you put the glue on, take a paper towel. And dab it. And dab it. And I used to do this when I did scroll saw stuff. I did it every single time I used glue. Because now I've got these little glues coming out here, and the other one does not have that, but it's okay. It's still really cute. And we're just going to press this down, make sure everything's really glued down. I mean, I feel like that's a really good quality looking ornament. I love it. I do too. And then I've just got some cutesy string here. And we're just going to cut a little loop here. Someone asked, could you have used a zig pin? Mm, I don't know with the wood veneer, I wouldn't. That adhesive is not meant for wood. Yeah. I would say um, that's only for cardstock. Yeah. So we're just gonna loop this through. Okay. And then we will tie a knot, just make sure it's even. And then I'm gonna tie a knot here. And we are done. I love it. That's it. Do you guys love it? I feel like there's lots of little tidbits and cool tips in this uh, tutorial that I really wasn't even expecting, honestly. Okay, that's it, guys. That's all. Okay, what do you guys think? Are you guys going to make it? Even if you don't have wood veneer, you all can make this using cardstock. Get creative. Um, you, you know, it doesn't have to be for a first Christmas. It can be for newlyweds or just because, and you want to make ornaments for your family. These are great uh, stocking stuffers. I love this. This is so cute. I know. It's fresh. It really is. I'm going to take uh, it home and hang it on my tree. Absolutely. It matches. It matches. I did browns and beiges this year, so. I love it. Love. That would be cute as a banner on a mantle, too. Yeah, so oh. if you did, like, three little pictures, that would be very cute. I love it. Um, can you paint on that wood? I don't know that we've ever tried to paint the wood veneer. I think you could, but you have to really know, like, it depends on what kind of paint you use. You don't want to really use a water-based paint. Yeah. It's probably going to warp it. And if you do paint it with water-based paint, you need to, like, after it dries, put something heavy on top of it. Yeah. So it stays flat. Um, but you don't want to paint this wood veneer. It's very pretty. And all the finishes are, like, very nice. Yeah, so. and you can get different colors. You don't have yeah. to just get that color. They have, like, a dark cherry. They have, like, a, a walnut. walnut. Mm -hmm. They have a natural. They even have one that's almost lighter. That is lighter than that, right? Yeah. Like a, more it's like a, a birch. Natural, yeah. Like a natural birch or something. Yes. So, but if you want a color, I would just do this in cardstock. They're just ornaments. So it's not like... You need anything heavy duty. Right. Um, someone was asking if you could use 110 pound cardstock. You don't even need to do that. Like it doesn't have to be that heavy. No, but if you wanted it to be, you could use it for the backer mm -hmm. and cut it on craft board. Um, but I would probably cut like a thinner cardstock for the front. Yes. And then if that's the case, then you could use like your zig pen mm -hmm. and make it like this. We just really like the idea of having like the wood look on the front. Yeah. But it's not necessary that you have that wood look. If you just have cardstock and you want to make this today, you can use HTV yeah. on cardstock in case you didn't know. Who would have thunk it? Yeah. Okay. Now, one more thing before we go. If you miss the top of the show, because I feel like we've had a lot of people that have come in and missed the top of the show. Yeah. Guys, you have to be here on Friday. We are announcing something huge. And this is something that I personally never thought that Tanner would do. Um, it's big. I mean, yeah. I, it, it was, it's something that's kind of we've been thinking about. But w the way that we're doing this for you guys, I think you're going to be... Oh, I don't know. It's fun. It's, it's a fun, fun surprise. It's a very fun surprise. And I think you all are going to love it. Yes. Um, like we said earlier, this surprise is going to be announced midnight 
on Thursday. Mm -hmm. So we're actually going to be releasing or premiering a video at midnight. So if you want to stay up and watch, you are more than welcome to. We like would old love, school like Black Friday style. Old school Black Friday releasing at midnight and then we will come together on Friday at 11 o'clock here in the studio for our Black Friday extravaganza where we are going to be making excuse me some amazing crafts mm -hmm. talking about the big announcement um, and then we're going to be kind of be like discussing it talking about it even maybe showing you a little something mm -hmm. um, so make sure you're here we also have so many giveaways yes good so ones. so many giveaways good ones they're like, like real bougie giveaways. really good ones yeah so make sure you all are there. If you're like, I'm not gonna remember, you can turn your notifications on. Um, like at the bottom of the video, there's a little bell. You can hit the bell and it'll notify you every time that we go live, which uh -huh. is great for Black Friday and for the rest of eternity. So you can always know when we're crafting. Also, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, y'all, make sure you go subscribe. We would really, really love to have that. Mm -hmm. um, we're trying really hard to like grow, continue to grow our YouTube. So it's mm -hmm. free. You all can subscribe and then yeah. get notified every time we do go live or every time we have a video that is premiered. Yes. So, and we have content coming out almost every day of the week. Not every day, listen, but almost every day. Listen, come December, we are going to have something every day of the week. Yes. Y'all better be ready. It's going to be awesome. Is all I've got to say. <laughs> Yay! All right. Well, we'll I know. see. You guys. I can't wait for Friday either. Everybody's saying I can't wait for Friday. I know. And tomorrow, um, Tanner, I believe, is going live from home. Yep. So you all will be with Tanner tomorrow, and then obviously it's Thanksgiving. We won't see you guys until Friday. So I hope everybody has a great Thanksgiving. We do have a video being released on Thanksgiving that I think you all are going to love the project. Yes. I think you're going to be obsessed with the project. Mm -hmm. It's very cute. Yes. So we'll see y'all on Friday. Be there. Be square. It's going to be really fun really good time you can hang out with us all day all day long all day long. 11 to 4 <laughs> eastern standard yep all right can't wait to see you guys i hope you all have an amazing thanksgiving um the next couple days off i hope you have mm -hmm. a great great time and we will see you guys back here on friday all right bye, bye guys